Hey, and welcome to this tutorial. Today, we will talk about how to get your textures out of Substance Painter so we can use them with V-Ray inside of Maya. Something to note is that I have a OCIO config file set up within my environment variables. Working with ASUS is great as it helps to have a consistency when working in multiple softwares and it has the capability to contain all the color information, which basically means more highlight and shadow information, which is great for Graydon. From the GitHub link in the description, you can download the config file. Then all you need to do is point to the config file in the environment variables, like so. Substance should pick up the config file, which is great whilst working in the viewport, but we don't necessarily want Substance to use that for the export, as it's going to convert the maps to the ACES color space, sort of baking that result into the files. So firstly, what I prefer to do is to make sure we have the color management set to legacy. This way, when we export, Substance isn't going to convert our maps to ACES, and then we can set the correct color spaces and manage that inside of Maya. So what you're going to want to do next is head up to File, Export Textures, choose your output directory. I just set mine to the source images folder of my Maya project. In this video, let's keep things relatively basic in the terms of the kind of fundamental maps you want. For that reason, let's just go ahead and use the template PBR Metallic Roughness. I will just go ahead and use PNG and leave the size based on what we set earlier, which I believe is 4K. Cool, so once you've done that, you just go ahead and hit export. Inside of Maya, we can go ahead and apply a new V-Ray material to our object. And let's just sort of work away from the top, starting with diffuse color. Click in the checkerbox, we can connect the base color file we exported. And once we've done that, just make sure the color space is set to utility, sRGB, texture. An easy way to know if the color space should be sRGB or raw is to kind of ask the question, is the color from the map going to be directly affecting the color in the render? If yes, like a diffuse or a colored refraction map, then it should be set to sRGB. If no, like a roughness or normal map, it should be set to raw. Set the reflection color to white and toggle on the use roughness option at the bottom. And then we can go ahead and attach the roughness file to the reflection roughness option. And then as we just discussed, ensure it's set to utility raw and toggle on alpha is luminance under the color balance tab. Also under the reflection tab, we can go ahead and set up the metalness map. So just go ahead and connect it like we have been doing. Toggle on alpha is luminance and ensure the color space is set to utility raw. We don't have any refraction on this object, so let's just go ahead and skip down to bump and normal map in. Change the type to normal map in tangent space and just connect the file. Remember, V-Ray uses the OpenGL format for normal maps and not DirectX. And just ensure the color space is set to utility raw. To subdivide a mesh at render time, there's a couple of ways to do that. We can apply the V-Ray attributes directly to the objects themselves by selecting the shape node and going to attributes, V-Ray, subdivision, and also add in like subdivision and displacement quality. Or we can go ahead and apply those attributes onto a V-Ray displacement node, which is what we're gonna do in this video. So on the V-Ray shelf, go ahead and click the little blue blob. We can then middle mouse drag our group into that. So now all the settings we apply to this displacement node will also be applied to our asset. Go ahead and add the V-Ray attribute subdivision, displacement control, subdivision and displacement quality. Before we go ahead and play around with these settings, let's go ahead and just connect our displacement file, which is our height map that we exported. Toggle on alpha is luminance and ensure the color space is set to utility raw. We can leave a lot of the stuff default, but we can adjust the edge length and max subdivisions a little bit, which I believe is basically saying keep subdividing until we have either an edge length of three or until we hit the max subdivisions of two. These are some settings you're just gonna have to play around for your scene, but this should work fine here. 
and subdividing too much is going to have a negative influence on the render times if you're just unnecessarily subdividing a mesh again and again and again. Cool, so moving on, when you export from Substance with an 8-bit or 16-bit map, you're going to want to set the displacement shift to negative 0.5. When using a 32-bit map, you can just leave it at 0. If you have UDIMs, change the displacement bounds from automatic to explicit. For this example, we don't have UDIMs, so we can just leave this as automatic. Finally, if you have just set up your OCIO config file, head up to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and you will just want to double check that the OCIO config file is being picked up correctly inside of Maya under the Color Management option. Other than that, we should be good to render. Once I just quickly add a light. And that is my usual workflow for going from Substance Painter to V-Ray. Let me know if you want me to go over anything in more detail or if you have any questions about anything. You can pick up all the scene files and textures from my Patreon if you want to have a play around with those and try it for yourself. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Come chat with me on the Discord and I'll see you in the next video.